what we've done here, we've established a, uh, a main drain, a main spoon drain, in fact, that takes all the runoff water and water that, I guess, um, comes out of the banana rows and excess water that comes out of the, uh, off the top of the farm, um, which really uh, represents close to 80% of our, of our banana farm. The need to establish the spoon drain came from years of um, wet seasons demolishing our main headland as that's where the water would run through. Um, the flow of water is the biggest issue that we have and obviously containing the soil sediment leave, leaving the farm yeah, is, a, is a big one for us. It's been a big problem and um, obviously being on red soil country and quite, and quite slopey uh, it certainly wants to run off and we get a lot of soil runoff with that. So the spoon drain now helps funnel or channel the water along our, the main section of our farm down into our dams. And also make it very environmentally friendly. The amount of soil loss due to that was just uh, phenomenal. So we've now managed to keep soil within the premises of the farm and obviously just uh, filtration, filter the water into the dams. We chose a spoon drain for this site because the natural contour of the land suited a spoon drain really well. We have two higher blocks on each side which naturally channels water down into the drain. The spoon drain needs to be nice and wide so it was able, we were able to establish the spoon drain with a headland on either side whereas before we were trying to work off one headland but as you can see now we've got a headland on either side that, don't, that doesn't get touched by the water. It's important to have it fully covered in grass because grass really helps keep the soil in place. It helps filter the water flowing through the spoon drain. It acts as a natural silk trap. The role of the rock bunkers, uh, even, evenly spaced out along the spoon drain, act as sort of water stoppages. So they're able to stop the flow, the fast flow of the water, and also then protect as, as they hit the bunker, they're able to trickle through and then go into the next bunker without taking too much soil erosion or anything with it. So we're actually slowing the velocity of the water that comes through. Anywhere up to two to three metres of water uh, can actually just be passing through the spoon drain. So it's really important we steady that flow up and um, these rock bunkers do a fantastic job in doing, in doing that. Construction of the spoon drain has improved our business. Um, in many ways. One of them obviously being a financial improvement um, by not having to replace our headland two or three times during the wet season. Ecologically it's improved our farm by being able to stop soil runoff, improve water filtration on farm, uh, so we're able to collect cleaner water into our irrigation dams. And I guess environmentally um, we're, you know, so close to the reef here, uh, stopping that soil erosion going out to the water system uh, is, is a big thing. Construction of the spoon drain, given its size, was always going to be quite expensive. Um, there's a lot of earthworks involved, a lot of um, materials like all these rocks, but it was far less costly than replacing our main headland three times a year from water damage due to rainfall. Yeah, we certainly couldn't have done this, I don't believe, in the short term without the help of ABGC and the government grant money towards this. Uh, this certainly is a great incentive for growers uh, within our industry to, to do these type of projects because one, um, you're, seeing the, you're seeing the finished product and two, um, we're, left, we're left in a better, a better way, shape and form to continue farming. <laughs>